Bambi My dear, my dear, my dear My dear, I want you here Don't get too near for there's lions beware Remind you of Quinn to be from BuzzFeed. Is it just me? Is it just me the generic version of Quinn to be from BuzzFeed? That's yeah. yeah. She is. She is. Think if someone gets it. Hello. Well, let's get into this. Uh, as you said, my name is Cameron Green, and I have discovered over my years that I am sheltered. And as a result of that, it turns out that I learned things a lot later than the rest of you all. You guys learned in the eighth grade. I find out about my junior year of college, okay? <laughs> Quite a bit late. Case in point, ninth grade, things are going good. I'm in high school, I'm having a great time. I'm thinking, what could be better? That's, you know, Christmas break comes, I get invited to a New Year's party. My first party I'll ever be to. So I'm hyped. I've seen movies, I know what to expect. Red Solo cups, beverages, dancing, some girls. What more can a ninth grade boy want? I'm gonna be lit, okay? It's gonna be hype. So, I tell my parents. Parents are like, cool, you can go to the party, we'll take you. Day comes, we go to the party. I'm like, cool, hop out the car, start walking. And I hear two car doors open up behind me. I turn around like, hey, like, what are y'all doing? And they're like, we're gonna meet the parents. I'm like, don't worry about that, I got this. Um, don't do that. And they didn't like say fuck you, but like when they rang the doorbell, I heard like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So what I did was I like, I stood to the side of the porch, but the porch light was shining like right here in the shadows, hoping my friends could put two and two together, that the two black parents go to the one black boy. <laughs> So it's all good though, because I get in the party and my girl Samantha sees me, so I don't worry, my parents do the same thing too. It's all good. So I'm like, alright, this is alright. You know, the party's good, I'm relieved. We go inside the living room, but the center of the party is at. And this bitch is dead. I mean, this party is more dead than the squirrels we run over on our way to class. I mean, it is. It's dead. Okay, if you like animals, I don't, so good luck with that. Um, I don't. Sharks? Okay, everything else. <laughs> Um, this party is dead. All we're doing, I kid you not, all 12 of us at this house party are just sitting here talking quietly as the music plays in the background. Just dead. Right? So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, I can't really talk. This is my first party. I'm pretty sure I don't know how this is supposed to go. But this ain't it. This, this is not. This is definitely not it. I'm, I'm quite sure. And the next thing you know, everyone just stands up and walks outside. I mean, just, no, 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 signal, no, who do you Like, no one, no one, like, no choir director just walks outside. Now, if you don't know much about black people, know this, we don't like sudden changes in our environment. That, that, that's just black people, thank you, six black people. It's like, thank y'all, six of y'all. Um, we don't do that, we don't do that. Y'all remember Transformers 1 where the SWAT team breaks in, the black guy runs through the glass? That's black people. We don't play that shit, okay? <laughs> Not at all. Let something happen right here, right now. All 12 black people here will be at Lloyd Noble's here in 13.5 seconds. <laughs> There's a track star in all of us, okay? <laughs> so now I'm confused. I don't know if I need to run or I don't need to fight. Because here's the thing. I don't need a door to be open to go through it. That's how we play, okay? <laughs> so I'm like, do I run? Do I fight? What's happening? Because, you know, I don't want to fight someone. I need to run. That's, that's going to be a bad other person. But I'm sitting there confused. And my girl Samantha's to my left. She walks across me. She's my confusion on my face. And she's like, oh, you don't know right here, do you? Which aren't words you want to hear while in the hood. Okay? And I was like, uh, no, 
no, I do not know why we're here. And she says, well, we're here to smoke some weed. To which I replied, drugs are real? <laughs> I didn't say it, but I was thinking it. Uh, there was this cute girl there, she was a junior, she had a nice butt. I didn't want to blow my chances, so I just kind of kept that one to myself. Uh, you know, didn't want to lose any cool points. So, um, here's the thing. So they go outside, and they smoke, they weed. I'm inside, sitting on the couch still, as my world kind of slowly dissolves, you know, dissolves in front of my eyes. You know, what's real and what's not. Because <laughs> no one's only about drugs like this. So, if you're from Oklahoma, and maybe your district had it not in seventh grade you have a sex ed course. Anyone had that sex ed course in seventh grade? Okay, about 15 people, thank you for the support. Um, in sex ed, half of this penis and vagina, other half of stimulus and depressants. And that's all I've heard about drugs. Stimulus and depressants. That's it. So when I left that class, I combined stimulus and depressants with what I learned in history class. The hippies, the LSD in California, and pretty much any TV show or movie you've seen about New York City has drugs in it. So like, I just thought, New York City and California is where all the drugs are in the world. So, you know, I know what y'all thinking. You know, you have diversity training, Cameron. You're black. You have a high chance of going to prison as is. Now there are drugs involved. Don't laugh at that. Don't laugh at that for real. Okay, I have a 33% chance. If I go to jail, I'm putting all y'all down. I'm trying. I'm shaking you. Don't play me. I'm gonna shake. I'm gonna shake you. That would be cool, though. I do want to shake somebody at some point. Um, keep it real with you. I've seen enough prison movies. Okay. Anyway, um, so. My biggest question isn't, am I going to go to jail? That's my second biggest question. My biggest question is, who drove? Who drove all the way to New York City and back? <laughs> we, nigga, for some weed? We, okay, here's the thing. I'm crunching the numbers. That's $491. Nigga, in a Prius. In a Prius, that's $491. That was 2011. Gas was $350. Who's paying that? We were in the ninth grade, okay? <laughs> Kind of money. Okay, Samantha, what's wrong with you? So they go out and smoke, they come back. Now they know I don't smoke weed. Which is gonna make sense in a second. Keep that in the back of your mind. I get a text from my parents and say, hey, we're coming back. Be ready when we get there. I'm like, cool. They start freaking out, like, oh, would you like some perfume to cover up the smell of the smoke? I'm like, no, I'm just gonna take this whipping like a G. Um, I'm just gonna die. If I die tomorrow, I'll tell that girl with the nice but I like her. Thank you. So the last place you want to be as black here in trouble is in the back seat of your black mama's car. Because that's the place where you are trapped. You are a victim. You can't tuck and roll. That's worse than the beating you're getting. You just, you just gotta take it. But I made it home. And as soon, not me, y'all, as soon as my dad put the car in park, I made a beeline to my room, played Xbox, like nothing was wrong, and I made it. No whooping, made it back to my house safe and sound, right? Thank you, thank you. Yes. Yes, it was not sore anymore. Okay, hello. So, I thought about this after a few years, like, how did I get invited to the weed party? I don't drink, I don't smoke, I try my best not to cuss, and I'm not the best example of that. I, too, am a virgin, but I'm doing it for Jesus, though, so, you know, I'm not sure what his problem was. <laughs> in love with that, sir, okay? It's for Jesus, it's for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, it's been nice, it's been a okay? <laughs> Glory. So, how do I get invited to the weed party? So, in eighth grade, I discovered Def Comedy Jam. So I watched all the comedians, Steve Harvey, Martin Lawrence, Brother Mac, two black people know who that is. Catch up, people, catch up. Uh, and my personal favorite, Cat Motherfucker Williams. Any Cat Williams? Okay, we're working with them tonight. Now tell me, Cat Williams fans, what is Cat Williams talking about? We. He talks about we. Thank you very much. So I'm watching Cat Williams, and I am so sheltered that even though he said weed, I still didn't know it was weed. I just like, whatever. So all I saw Cat Williams do this, <clears throat> and people laughed and had fun. So I sat there with my sheltered ass and watched this, and I was like, you know what? I want to make people laugh too. So I go to school the ninth grade and turn to fucking Oprah and just hand the invisible blunts out to everyone. Does you get a blunt? You get a blunt? You get a blunt? You get a blunt? And apparently, that lets people think you smoke the bud when you don't smoke the bud. Not at all. So I did some thinking, and I was trying to like, you know, even to this day, how, how, how do drugs 
work. Like I never, never been there, never did that. I just watch Netflix and do homework all the time. So how do how do drugs work? So I'm thinking like, okay, you go to New York City, you get behind a skyscraper at night in the alleyway because you don't do drugs. You know, you don't deal drugs in a Walgreens parking lot. That's a family store. Like we, <laughs> there are children. So I'm thinking like, okay, it's like an auction. So like when the big drug dealer comes out and like two homeless guys are announced again, like. Well, this is a nice auction, Dan. Uh, the first item on the block, we have a 50 gram bag of ooh wee. <laughs> Sorry, the price is $1.25 a gram. And coming up next, that good shit, sponsored by Shelter Kids of America. <laughs> Y'all, my name is Cameron Green. That's my time. Y'all have a good night. Bambi, Bambi. My dear, my dear, my dear. My dear, I want you here Don't get too near for there's lions